Hello folks, Rob Maximum RD here, and here I am back with the uh, real uh, response to Mark Vahir's um, open tag, emulation, good, bad, ugly. Um, it's good. It's, it's definitely good. It's a good thing. Uh, I'll, I'll avoid all the uh, questions of um, the moralities involved, the legalities involved, um, and whether uh, people should do it, whether they shouldn't, uh, because bottom line is the way I look at it, emulation itself is a good thing. How it's handled and what one does with it, well, that's questionable, debatable, arguable, obviously, <laughs> as with most things in the gaming community. But emulation itself definitely is something that uh, is very beneficial. Um, I have been emulating different platforms and uh, many different uh, computers and consoles for many years. Um, and uh, as some others have pointed out, it's also great for developers and development. They can test their code, so to speak, in an emulated environment. Um, also, uh, for security purposes, it can also be good when you run Windows and, uh, you know, go online uh, in a virtual uh, environment. For example, you could, uh, you know, run VMware and uh, run Windows operating system. And when you're online, uh, you know, you're still interacting with the online world in the same way. But if there's any virus or security issues or anything like that, you're, you're running it in an in a emulated virtual platform. So it really can't harm your actual hardware. It can't uh, go beyond the walls of the virtual environment. So your uh, actual um, PC or laptop or whatever uh, will remain safe. So it definitely has some uh, uses in the, the areas of security and uh, development. Um, of course, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not perfect, obviously, uh, but in many cases and uh, under uh, certain uses, it's pretty damn good. Um, myself, my own personal experience, uh, I find that uh, the best emulation is when, whether it's for a console or a computer, is if you, uh, you load up the emulator, um, you have a, a user-friendly interface. Within a couple clicks, you're running your uh, operating system or your game or program or what have you, and it just works. Um, my what I found to be good examples of this is a PC, sorry PSXE, which is a PlayStation One emulator. Uh, Project 64, which is an N64 emulator. Um, those, those are two examples uh, that I find the interface uh, very intuitive. Uh, it works well. And uh, there's another benefit uh, when playing these games uh, in, in these uh, uh, emulation programs. Now, while it's true that emulation is not you know, 100% perfect. Uh, you know, in many cases it can be 99% or 99.9% .9 perfect, or it may only be 80% perfect, depending on the situation. But what I also find interesting is, uh, for example, uh, if you want to emulate the Amiga computer. Okay, I can emulate the Amiga on a, on a mid-level PC, on a mid-range PC, basically nothing special just your basic PC uh, you know you can emulate an, an Amiga a Commodore Amiga that's like a Commodore Amiga uh, with an 060 accelerator card and you know uh, tons of RAM and hard drive space etc uh, basically you can emulate that and have the ultimate Amiga that you know I can't speak for everyone, but uh, that I basically couldn't afford or own myself in any possible way. 
um, and I could have it, you know, right in this virtual environment. Uh, now, again, I'd rather have the actual hardware. Um, I'm not going to argue that point. It's always better to have the real hardware. I would love to have an Amiga 4000 with an 060 accelerator and a ton of RAM and a huge hard drive and, and all that, but uh, that's not likely to happen. Uh, you know, besides t trying to track one down, locating it, you know, finding one that's working, uh, finding one I could actually uh, afford, then having it shipped to me, then troubleshooting it, making sure it's working and operating and there's no issues with it. Um, by the time all that is said and done, hey, that would be great. That would be my choice, for sure. I would love to have that. Um, but again, that's it's an unlikelihood in my given situation and uh, but thanks to the power of emulation I can still experience that environment I can experience running uh, Amiga games and programs on a top spec Amiga that I could never own so that's really really cool um, that's you know one example uh, another example is I, uh, with a good quality emulator program, as I said, something with an intuitive interface, something that uh, uh, is easy to use. Uh, you know, a couple clicks, you, a PSXE, you know, you select your game, you load up your, your game, your, uh, either your original disc or your image, and uh, you're playing the original game. But what I love is, uh, and this is the point I'm going back to now, Although it's not always 100% accurate or the same as the original experience, that can actually be a benefit in some ways. A good example is EPSXE, EP, sorry, PSXE, or is it EPSX? Uh, I'm all mixed up now. Anyway, the PlayStation emulator um, has many plugins for graphics, sound, um, you know, etc. And using some of those plugins, and the power of your PC's graphic card, especially if you have, you know, a, you know, a, a half decent graphic card, you can actually improve the look of your PlayStation games. You can run them at a much higher resolution than your original hardware, than the original PlayStation was ever capable of. So that looks better. Now, of course, you know the PlayStation, uh, one of the early 3D polygonal. Um, powerhouses and uh, that was great but uh, you know you bump up the resolution you're running at a really high resolution but you got these really blocky textures well now you can using the emulator you can add some filters to it you can smooth it out or you can add higher resolution textures all kinds of things uh, all kinds of effects that you can add to the graphics to make them actually better than they they ever were. I really found that useful in uh, PJ64 with the uh, N64 emulator. Um, as you know, I've really been into N64 lately, and I love my original system and cartridges and uh, Game Shark and all that. The controller, I love that. But uh, using using uh, PJ64 and the Adaptoid uh, adapter that I have, I can plug in my original. N64 controller, boot up the emulator, pick uh, an N64 game, and what I love is especially beneficial with N64 games. What was a couple of the, the problems, well, not problems, let's say limitations of the original N64. Uh, m what they would say muddy graphics. The graphics were, the textures were very low res, um, and draw distance was just horrible, you know, things always constantly popping up in the in the background. Um, but with various filters that you can add to the graphics in the emulation, you can get it looking much nicer, much higher resolution, sharper, better, higher resolution textures, and basically, um, and some people have even created mods that uh, basically add completely new textures to like classic games uh, uh, like uh, Zelda, for example, uh, and even Mario 64. Uh, now, I haven't used them myself, but I've seen videos of these uh, modifications applied using these emulators. 
and uh, wow, it's really impressive how much better they look. So, yeah, I guess that's what I would say. I, I uh, uh, while you don't always get, you know, the downside is you don't always get a 100% perfect emulation of, of what you're trying to recreate. But by the same token, some of the pluses are you can do things that just weren't possible on the original hardware. Higher resolution, better textures, basically better graphics in the same games. Um, and, if, and, and if an emulator is well implemented and has a friendly user interface and is easy to use, and again, like PJ64 with the, the Adaptoid allows me to use my original controller, um, you know, that's pretty great, just having all those games at your fingertips and being able to play them. Uh, of course, you know, other advantages are uh, when you use emulation, you know, it's not as much of a storage issue. Literally having to store hundreds of cartridges. Um, I don't have the room here. You know, this is a one-bedroom condo. There's barely enough room here for, for me and my wife. And uh, I own a lot of cartridges, you know. But sometimes, you know, I, I don't want all the cartridges just sitting out in boxes out in the living room. Everything's packed away. And sometimes I just don't feel like dragging them all out, you know. And same with the system. I don't feel like pulling them all out of the cupboards or the closets or what have you. I just want to play an Atari 2600 game. Or I just want to play, you know, a ColecoVision game. Or, you know, NES. Or Super Nintendo. Or even Sega Genesis. Just fire it up on my emulator. Play the game. Storage is not a concern. Space, space and where I'm going to keep all these cartridges is not a concern. So there's definitely advantages to be had to emulation. Um, I don't know what else to say really. Uh, so that that's my take on it. I love emulation. I think it's a it's a great tool. Uh, it's also, as some have mentioned, it's just a great way of preserving uh, memories and uh, keeping. Uh, you know, a historical uh, record of our classic gaming and computing because, you know, all this hardware, consoles, uh, everything from this, from, well, especially from the 70s, uh, a lot, you know, a lot of it from the 80s, and as time goes on, all this hardware is just dying, and a lot of it's getting to the point where it's just becoming, uh, you know, it's getting to a point where it can no longer be repaired. Um, and, you know, even the stuff that is repaired, uh, peop you know, some hardware is just becoming more scarce. You know, you, you want to pick up a super graphics system or, <laughs> you know, pick up a, um, you know, some ob obscure console that never appeared in the U.S. or, or uh, Canada. Um, well, you know, there's a good chance you can emulate it and still experience it. And that experience and, you know, the ability to... Uh, Sorry for all the noise. I don't know if you hear that. Kids playing outside. And that ability to, uh, you know, experience those platforms and play those games would be completely impossible if not for emulation. So emulation is a good thing. Um, it's, it's, it's a good tool. How it's used can be questionable, of course, but that's, that's a whole other debate and uh, not one that I really want to get into. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like emulation. Uh, if you don't like emulation, that's fine. That's your privilege. But emulation is an option. And it is going to help preserve, um, you know, a lot of these classic games and computers and, uh, and uh, operating systems. So that's my response. Emulation is good. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Rob out. Thanks for watching.